Hello friends, hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to the ninth practice set of the SAT series. Uh, in this episode, we are going to specifically focus on absolute value questions. Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, our very first question is uh, absolute value of x minus 4 plus 4 is greater than minus 36. Right, and we have to find the possible solutions or possible values of x. So in all such questions, right, the first thing which we do is that we just keep the absolute value term on the left side and get everything else onto the right side, correct? So in this question, for example, we have two terms. We have this term and we have this four, right? Let's move four to the right side. So we get absolute value of x minus four is greater than minus 36 minus four, right? Which is nothing but minus 40. So this is minus 40, correct? Now, one thing what you need to remember is that it will have two scenarios, right? The first scenario would be when this guy inside the absolute value, right? This value itself is greater than minus 40, okay? So we say x minus 4 is greater than minus 40, correct? And the other scenario would be when this guy inside the absolute value is less than 40. So basically the, the way to remember this is that you keep the same sign and you keep the same sign. You keep both of these with the same signs. And the other scenario, you change the sign for, of both of them. So you get x minus 4 is less than 40, correct? So same sign you kept of the number and the same sign of the inequality. Here you change the sign of the number, minus 40 reduces to 40, and you also change the uh, inequality sign to less than, right? And then we solve it like regular. So it is like x is greater than minus 40 plus four, or x is greater than minus 36. So that is one set of values for x. And for the other one, it will be x is less than 44. So all volume values of x, which are greater than minus 36, but less than 44, become the solution set for this inequality, right? Just to reiterate, the first step is to move all other terms to the right side, except the absolute value term. So we move four here, we got minus 40, and then we got into two scenarios. This is the first scenario, this is the second scenario. In the first scenario, you keep the same signs of the number or the term here, as well as the inequality. In the second scenario, you change both the signs and then you solve for them. Uh, next question. Five minus eight times absolute value of minus two n is equal to minus 75. Again, uh, the concept remains the same. We've got to bring all other terms to the right side except the absolute value. So the first thing which we'll do is that we'll, we'll bring five to the right side. So we'll do minus five here and we do minus five here. So five and minus five get canceled out and we get minus eight. Absolute value of minus two n is equal to minus 80, right? Now we divide both the sides by minus eight because we just want this term to be on the left side. We want everything else to be removed. So you're going to divide this by minus eight. You're going to divide this by minus eight. Minus eight and minus eight get canceled out. We get minus two n is equal to 10, correct? Now we have two scenarios, right? Either this guy inside the absolute value, right? This term inside. Either that can be equal to 10 or that can be equal to minus 10 because the absolute value of minus 10 will also be 10, right? So the first scenario would be minus 2n is equal to 10, correct? And the second scenario would be minus 2n is equal to minus 10. This will give you n is equal to minus 5 and this will give you n is equal to 5. So basically, n equal to minus 5 and n equal to 5 form the solution set for the given equation. 
Again, just to reiterate, pretty straightforward. We move all the terms to the right side till we are left only with the absolute value term. And then at that point of time, we say that this guy inside the absolute value, this could be equal to plus of this number, or this could also be equal to the negative of this number. And then we solve each one of them. Uh, question number three. For what value of x is the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 1 equal to 1? Right? Essentially the same thing. We can write this as an equation. And essentially what they are talking about is x minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 1. Right? And we have to solve for x. Again, very similar. We bring everything to the right side except of the absolute value term. So we bring this minus 1 here. So we get x minus 1 is equal to 2. Correct? Now, two scenarios come here again. The first scenario is that when this guy inside the absolute value, right, this guy can be equal to 2. So x minus 1 is equal to 2. And this can also be equal to minus 2. So the second scenario would be x minus 1 is equal to minus 2. This gives you x is equal to 3 and this gives you x is equal to minus 1. So the, these are the two values of x for which this equality will hold good. And we can double check as well. Right? When we put x equal to 3 here, 3 minus 1 is 2, absolute value of 2 is 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1. Correct. So this holds good. Let's try for x equal to minus 1. When x is minus 1, minus 1 times minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Absolute value of minus 2 is 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1. So we just see or we can cross check that yes, the solutions which we have got, you know, uh, hold the equality as true. So x equal to 3 and x equal to minus 1 are the two solutions for this equality. Next question. Uh, absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than 7. Again, as we saw probably on the very first question, we will have two scenarios. Right? The first scenario would be when this term inside the absolute value is actually less than or equal to 7. So we write 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 7. And the second scenario would be that we change the sign of this term and we also flip this inequality sign. So it becomes 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to minus 7. The first scenario has both of the same signs. The term is of the same sign as this term. The inequality sign is the same as here. And in the second scenario, we change the sign of this term and we flip the inequality sign. Right? So this becomes 2x is less than or equal to 10 or x is less than or equal to 5 and for this one we get 2x is greater than or equal to minus 4 or x is greater than or equal to minus 2 right so for all values of x which are greater than minus 2 and less than 5 this inequality will hold good or in other words you can write it like this So this is the solution set for this inequality. Again, very similar to the first question. Two scenarios come into picture. In the first scenario, keep the same sign, keep the same inequality sign. In the second scenario, change the sign and flip this inequality sign. Question number five. Absolute value of half x minus one is less than one. Again, very similar. There's no other term, so we don't need to do anything. You can directly go with the scenarios, the first scenario and the second scenario. In the first scenario, we will keep the same signs. So it will be half x minus 1 is less than 1. And the second scenario would be half x minus 1 is greater than or equal to minus 1. Same signs and opposite signs. We solve this, we get half x is less than or equal to 2 or x is less than or equal to 4. Right? Here we get half x is greater than or equal to 0 or x is greater than or equal to 0. So basically for all values of x, 
which are greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to four, this inequality will hold good. Or in other words, your solution becomes this. So this is your solution. X is less than or equal to four, greater than or equal to zero. Again, very similar to what we are doing, it's just a practice and there's a kind of a repetition of the questions. Two scenarios, same sign and opposite signs, and then you solve for them. And let's take my last question here. So the absolute value of three by four n minus two is less than one. And it's given that n is an integer, and we have to find any uh, possible value of n. Or essentially, in other words, we have to solve for n. So let's see what's happening here. Same thing, right? We go with the two scenarios. In the first scenario, we keep the same signs. So 3 over 4 n minus 2 is less than 1. And in the second scenario, we have 3 over 4 n minus 2 is greater than minus 1. So we flip this sign and we flip this sign. We solve this and we get 3 over 4 n is less than 3 or n is less than 4. Correct? Uh, here we get 3 over 4 n is greater than 1 or n is greater than 4 over 3. So essentially, these are our conditions, right? So n has to be greater than 4 over 3, but n has to be less than 4. Now 4 over 3 is nothing but 1 point something, correct? So it means that, and if n is an integer, then the possible values of n can only be either 2 or 3. Right, because it has to be greater than one dot something, but it has to be less than four. So the only integer values possible with these conditions are two or three. So the possible values of n are two or three. Hey folks, hopefully you got a good idea in terms of how to solve uh, equations or inequalities dealing with the absolute value functions. Now, these type of questions are very common on SAT and ACT and they're pretty easy as well. So don't miss out on them. Uh, keep practicing. Uh, do like and subscribe. Uh, see you in the next session.